So a number of years ago, I was with my uh, male side of my dad's family on a green key fishing team uh, expedition for a week. And one morning, my dad and I went out for a walk and I was telling him how well we were doing in this strategy, investment strategy. And we talked a little bit about it and he, he made the comment that's always stuck with me. And that is, at some point, everything comes to an end if it's life if it's an investment strategy if it's for the good or for the for the bad it all comes to an end at some point point. and last night i witnessed one of the two of the greatest quarterbacks in nfl history play each other and one of them who i'm a pretty big fan of um, most likely played his last game. As you can see, I'm wearing my Saints hat, all black. I'm heartbroken a little bit. I would have loved to see Drew Brees make another run at a Super Bowl. Um, and unfortunately, it just wasn't to be. And most likely, we'll see Drew Brees retire. He's played many years of his life. But like my dad once said, everything comes to an end. So why am I telling you this? Well, markets have been incredibly great. And like my dad said, at some point, everything comes to an end. And in this video, I'm gonna point out why I think we're nearing that time, but why now or soon may not be the time for a market retracement. Hey, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. It helps support my channel and helps me grow it, uh, but also hit the notification so you can be notified when I drop a new video. So let's first start with why the market will go higher over the next, let's say three to six months. First of all, Markets go higher because of liquidity. And when there's liquidity in masses of liquidity, like we've seen over the last 12 months, markets go really, really high. So if liquidity is the big driver of markets, then what happened in the last week or two that injects an enormous amount of liquidity back into the system? Yes, the stimulus package of $1.9 trillion. Now, if you think about this, think about the fact that December retail sales were down 11%. I mean, this is December, right? December is when you go shopping and you spend tons of money on stuff you really don't need and you give it as, give it as gifts. That's Christmas, right? Well, historically, that is a big retail time of the year. And guess what? Retail sales were down 11%. Why? Well, go back to end of August when stimulus checks ended and you have a shrinking of liquidity in the average household in the United States, which means they don't spend money, which means Christmas isn't as good as previous years and you have a decline in retail sales. And then comes the $1.9 trillion stimulus package. And that is liquidity. And as we start to get that, I believe, like we saw back in, what, April, May, June, a lot of that liquidity went into savings, checking, and money market accounts, as you can see with M2 money supply increases, but also you saw investing happened and markets took off everybody was stay, stay at home because of the lockdown and we ended up spending money in the market which drove stocks higher i mean jump on TikTok and take a look at how many under 18 year old stock experts are on TikTok. type in neo or stock investing and you'll see an enormous amount of X, Y, and Z generations, and really more like 
back, the lower half of the Y and Z generations on there touting stocks and touting options and all this other stuff. So I believe that the next 90, 180 days, we could see all time highs in the S&P, NASDAQ, the Dow. We could see an enormous gains in commodities because of this liquidity injection. I mean, if you get a $1,400 check and you're big into investing now, you're gonna probably dump part of that $1,400 check into the markets and capture gains and do really well, which means your high beta, high flying stocks are. Check this kid out. So anyways, maybe he's the next Neo purchaser, right? If he gets a check, why not, right? So it keeps the market going hot. So it comes down to liquidity. And when you get a ton of liquidity, you get markets going higher or, and you get momentum going. And that's what we've seen over the last couple, well, last year or so, since we started getting stimulus package. Now, that liquidity has dried up a bit over the last couple uh, months because we didn't have the stimulus checks. We didn't have uh, these other um, stimulus packages. But now with this 1.9, trillion that we're gonna get well now we've got stimulus so it's a good possibility that markets will go higher in the next 90 to 180 days I don't look out much further than 180 days anymore and the reason is it's because the markets change so so quickly as you can see here I am at my wife's warehouse she, her studio is here and so I'm out walking and talking so so why would the markets go down well here it here's the thing if liquidity dries up and there's no support under the markets then markets go down so what do I mean by support well there's this thing called short selling and short selling is when you sell a stock you don't own and you buy it back at a lower price. Now, when you short sell, depending on the inventory of the stock uh, that maybe brokers have or uh, market makers have, uh, if there is plenty of um, inventory, you can sell a stock short. You, uh, you're doing it on margin, which means you're doing it on borrowed money in a sense. And then when the stock, if the stock drops to a lower price, you buy it back and you make the spread. Well, like buying a stock long, if the stock goes up, you make money. If you short the stock and the stock goes down, you make money. But if you're long a stock and the stock goes down, you lose money if you take your profits or you cut your losses and sell it. But it's the same thing in short selling. If the stock goes up against you because you're shorting it and it goes up against you and you sell it, well, you lose money. Well, here's the thing about short selling, and this is when people get really pessimistic about a stock. And recently, um, GameStop uh, recently did this last week. The amount of shares out there shorted was like over 100%. So people were margining up. They were really pessimistic on it. And then all of a sudden, the stock just took off, like went through the roof in a matter of a day. And it was basically the short sellers covering their short positions. So why is this important? Well, this is important because when you don't have any underlying resistance, meaning like if you're short, you have a big short position or there's a, a sizable or a normal short position behind a stock, well then that gives it support so that if they need, if the stock gets good earnings or some good news comes out, it drives the stock higher because the short sellers have to cover their shorts. Well, the thing that is happening right now is there's not a lot of short sellers against this market. It's actually very, very leveraged up or margined up. And I think that has a lot to do with the number of individual retail uh, purchasers uh, in the market and they are borrowing money to leverage up their positions to for the market to go higher which is creating this euphoric kind of state of things and as I was telling 
uh, my business partner the other day, it just reminds me of 80, 98 and 99 when everything was just killing it. And stocks were going up five, six, 10% in a day. And in some cases, 100%. I mean, that's crazy. And you look at the amount of leverage and margin out there that's been taken out to do this, but also the lack of people betting against it. And when you have a lack of resistance, in a sense, you possibly, if something bad happens, if we had a, a terrorist attack like in 9-11 or, um, you know, a hedge fund collapses, um, like we saw back in, uh, was it 07 during the housing crisis, markets can go into this selling phase of high volume selling, which then in the end causes people to lose a lot of money. So it's a concern of mine. Now, as one friend of mine pointed out to me, he says, you can't fight the Fed. And you're, you know what, if, you're, if the Fed's producing money and central banks are continue, continuing to print money and put it out there, it does create a sense, a, a floor in a sense, and it creates uh, a ability to push the markets higher and keep them sustained. You saw that in the treasury bond market when uh, the Fed's been out buying, I believe it's 100 or 80 billion of bond, treasury bonds and another 40 billion in uh, mortgage-backed security bonds. And it's driving, it's, well, it has been driving yields down and uh, our yields down and bond values up. But now we're seeing a, a bit of that pullback. And even though the Fed is buying, so in the end, markets could go a lot higher. And because there's a liquidity in the system, and as long as that liquidity, do, liquidity doesn't dry up, well then markets will go higher. We, I do believe history does repeat itself and it does show, give you signs that there may be cracks in the system, but as long as there's money flowing and money flow is positive, well, we could see this bull run go to all time highs. But my concern is there's not a lot of support behind it, meaning resistance, short selling. There isn't an opposite side of the trade as much. And that to me is a potential weakness in markets. But in the meantime, things are going higher and you really just can't argue with that. So I guess the whole point is just watch your six, just take care of yourself and be careful of what could come. And that's when I always say, look at the volatility, look at the volume, and look at the price action. When you start to see higher lows and lower lows in your stock prices over a three period or three week or three month period of time, and you start to see that volatility tick up, well, you know that things may be coming to an end.